guys, it's Meg, and it's that time of the week again where we get to talk about the best show on television, AMC's The Walking Dead. Today we're talking about the mid-season premiere for season five, episode nine, called What Happened and What's Going On. What an amazing, crazy, terrible, horrifying, sad episode. I mean, how many emotions did you guys feel last night? I laughed, I smiled, and I cried, and I was completely shocked. Um, for those of you who haven't yet watched the video, or the show, you probably shouldn't watch this video because it will contain massive spoilers. However, uh, I don't believe we'll be talking about any comic spoilers at this point. So, you should be good if you are all up to date. Uh, what did you guys think of the episode last night? I So I had heard because one of my viewers had um, spoiled it for me unfortunately and posted in the comments of one of my videos that Tyrese dies um, at some point during this season. So that being the only time I heard about this rumor, um, I wasn't sure if it was true or not. I had kind of had a feeling anyways that he was going to go just my own predictions and thoughts, but I had absolutely no idea that it was going to be in the very first episode, the mid-season premiere. How crazy is that? Have we ever had a death in the mid-season premiere before? I don't think so. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was so shocked and horrified. I was just not expecting him to die that quickly and into the season. Like, I don't know. And I'm really sad. You know, I'm not, he wasn't one of my favorite characters, but he was definitely a beloved character. I, everyone loves Tyrese. Like, how can you not like Tyrese? He's the big teddy bear guy that saved Judith. Like, if you don't like him at all, you have to like him because he saved Judith. Um, I, I just, so many emotions. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sad to see yet another character go so quickly when we have barely even had time to grieve Beth's death. The group, uh, according to the Talking Dead afterwards, it's been 17 days since Beth's death. So, you, you know, that's barely any amount of time to grieve for the loss of someone who has been such a strong, not a strong character, but, you know, such a long time character in this show. For the, for the group, Beth has been with them since the farm, forever. So, you know, it's really hard to say goodbye to her and then to have Tyrese go so suddenly too. I mean, it just shows how unpredictable the world is that they're living in. And, you know, like Michonne, uh, or like, not Michonne, like Glenn says, outside of Shirewelt when they're looking at the torsos, it wouldn't matter because no matter where they go, this is the world that they're, they're living in. This is what they're gonna be dealing with. Um, there's no getting away from it at this point. So I wanna start out with Tyrese's death and all of the hallucinations and the fever from the walker bite um, because if you don't listen to anything else in this video I really want you to listen to this portion of it and my sort of reasoning behind the hallucinations and why certain people were featured and why certain people were not featured so I've heard a lot of comments on you know why wasn't Karen featured in his hallucinations because you know she meant a lot to him why wasn't um Oh, there was somebody else, I can't remember who, but why certain strong, dead, now dead characters weren't also featured in Tyrese's hallucinations. So, uh, I wanted to start out by, by saying, back to the scene where we see Noah in the front seat with Tyrese while they're driving to Shirewalt. Um, Noah is talking about Beth's death. He said the trade was going to work and then it just didn't. And Tyrese tells him, uh, it all worked out how it was meant to um, in, in meaning that it happened the way it was always supposed to happen I, I can't remember the exact phrasing that he says but essentially it is everything it, it comes down to everything happens for a reason everything happens like it's supposed to happen so even if they did everything right with the trade between the hospital and Rick's group Beth was still meant to die at that point um, uh, you know, and then we hear a little bit about uh, Tyrese and, and his childhood growing up and the what's happened, what's going on kind of phrase comes up about his childhood and how he's always um, was forced to listen to the news so that he would always know what's going on and how to deal with it and that sort of thing. And it's a very prominent, you know, part of the story here. They make it to Shirewell. Shirewell is overrun with walkers, everyone's dead, they don't find anyone alive. Noah is heartbroken and he is, you know, crying and laying on the ground and Tyrese is telling him that, 
he can't give up, that he can't give up because there was a point where Tyrese was willing to give up after everything that happened with Karen. He was so broken that he didn't want to be there anymore. And he let himself on the medical run for supplies. Everyone got out of the car and he stayed in the car and he let himself be surrounded by walkers. Um, and, and he was ready to die at that point. And he started fighting, but then he just never stopped fighting and he made it out. And if he hadn't made it out, if he hadn't survived, if he hadn't chosen to survive, he would have never been at the prison. He would have never been able to save, to save Judith from the prison attack. Judith would be dead. He would have never reunited Judith with her father. So every choice that, that Tyrese made to live was all for something. It was all leading up to the fact that he would be the one to protect Judith. And if he had chosen to die at that point, Judith would be dead. And a lot of this show, this episode, was about how the choices you make affect the long-term group. I can't explain it. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words at the moment. Uh, how the choices you make affect you long-term. And you'll never know what would have happened if you had made, if you had made a different choice. You'll never know. But oftentimes when you look back and you see how the choices you made have affected you so far and the people that have potentially died because of the choices you made or the choices you didn't make, the things you did or the cho choices you, or the things you chose not to do, how that has affected you long term. And that's, that's what this whole episode is kind of leading up to. So they're in Noah's house. It's awful because, you know, Noah's mother, we believe, is dead on the floor. It looks like her head's bashed in. Noah's covering up her body. Tyrese goes upstairs. Now, Noah already mentioned once that he had a twin brother. Twin brothers, not his twin. He had twin brothers. So two, two brothers that were twins. Um, Tyrese finds one of them on the bed and I don't think, I think Tyrese is registering that there is two by looking at the pictures of the twins, but not in time to realize there is another walker in the room with him. He gets bit and it happened really fast. Um, you know, he fights off the, the little boy walker and Noah comes in and is forced to put down his brother and Noah leaves and runs to go get help. And Tyrese is left there with a wound and he's bleeding out. He's bleeding out very quickly. And the fever happens very fast. And the reason the fever happens very fast is because of his blood loss, because he's bleeding out so quickly. If it had just been a minor wound, you know, he, the fever probably wouldn't have taken him so quickly. So while Noah is running to get the rest of the group to help save Tyrese. Tyrese is starting to be overcome with visions and hallucinations from the fever. So uh, all of the hallucinations that we see revolve around the choices he make, he made, excuse me, and how it affected these certain people that are featured in his hallucinations. So like I said, some of the comments were wondering why Karen wasn't featured in his hallucinations since she was so prominent to him. And my response to that is that, and I'm reading this because I wrote it down and I feel like I can't say it probably straight from my head as well as I can once I write it down. So I said, everyone pictured stemmed from a decision Tyrese made that affected the course of the entire group. Not to say he is to blame for these deaths, for all of this, but perhaps in the darkest parts of his mind, he does feel that he is to blame. And that's why this is all cropping up in his, this fever induced hallucination that he's seeing. We see Martin because he didn't kill him in the cabin when Carol was at Terminus. Um, he could have killed him, he had the opportunity to, and he chose not to. And he feels like if he had killed Martin there in the cabin, maybe the termites would not have been able to find his group at the church. Maybe they wouldn't have been able to capture Bob. Maybe Bob would still be alive. Maybe Bob wouldn't have been eaten. Maybe if none of the termite stuff had happened at the church, they would have been able to get to the hospital faster and prevent Beth's death. Maybe Beth would still be alive. He felt tremendous responsibility for Lizzie and Mika. Tremendous guilt when they died. Tremendous guilt for Mika's death being caused by Lizzie and for that 
the hardest decision you will ever have to do, putting down a child because there's no other way to deal with them. He feels guilty. He feels responsible for those two little girls' death. As far as the governor, if you guys remember back when Tyrese and his group first came to the prison, they asked to be allowed to stay there, but Rick was suffering from his own hallucinations. He was seeing Lori. He saw Lori in the common area of the prison and he freaked out and he said, get out, get out. And Tyrese and his group were really kind of scared by Rick's actions and they left. They thought he was yelling at them to get out. They left, they wind up at the Woodbury, at Woodbury with the governor. And in order to join the governor's group, you know, uh, Tyrese says that he'll give them the layout to the prison, that he'll help defend Woodbury because at this point in time, he feels that Woodbury is a good place, that the governor is a good guy. He doesn't know any different. And even though he's not directly responsible for the governor's attack on the prison, you know, the governor had already taken Maggie and Glenn and already knew that they were camped out at the prison. So he already knew about this. Does Tyrese know that? No, Tyrese doesn't know that. Tyrese feels the, the guilt from siding with the governor and potentially being part of the cause of the destruction of the prison, of, of everything that happened so far, you know, and that's what he's warring with. As he's suffering from these hallucinations, he's warring with the fact that no, it's not his fault that he did all of that. Those are, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. None of this was his fault. But yet, you have the governor telling him that it is. You have Martin telling him that it is. And then Bob's trying to help him and it's just so overwhelming. And he almost, you know, he's hallucinating so he doesn't know that there's another walker in the room. He almost gets his face chewed off. And I was just sitting there going, no. Like, if you saw my reaction video, you know, I did not want him to be eaten. Like, I feel like that is the worst way for one of our characters to go, to just be mauled and eaten and shredded apart by a walker. And I didn't want him to die when no one was around. I wanted the group to, to be able to say goodbye to him or to help him, for, for him not to be alone when he died. And I'm sure a lot of you guys felt the same way. Um, unfortunately, the group got back too late to save him. They cut off his arm. Um, and tried to haul him out of, of Shirewilt. And, you know, he's a big guy. It's difficult, you know, as they're fighting off walkers to get him back to the truck. And yet they're still five miles away from where the rest of the group is camped out. And he's bleeding out. He, they've chopped off his arm. They have nothing to cauterize it with. He's bleeding out. And it's just so emotional and horrible. And you guys know, I mean, it's just, it was so like prolonged, but, but, in a really sad way, you know, where they're trying so desperately to save him and yet they're not able to. And I just loved the moment in the car where he was in the back seat and Lizzie and Mika are there with him and Beth is in the front seat driving and Bob is there and they're all telling him it's okay. It's okay to let go. It's okay to be done. And you know, Lizzie and Mika saying it's not just okay, it's better now. And he gives up at that point and he hopefully goes off to a better place where he's not in this world anymore and you know he always suffered not suffered he always struggled with his morality and you know his ability to kill walkers he felt like he couldn't kill walkers at the prison he felt like he couldn't kill them on the on the you know food runs that they did and he was trying so hard to fit into this world you know and 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 yet maintain his morality and he was able to Kind of come back from that and when he had his mission and he saved judith and he reunited judith with rick like that was what he felt most comfortable doing caring for her saving her doing these good things and he always you know struggled with the thought of killing people that's why he didn't kill martin because he thought that you know his group is getting away they're all getting away surely martin is out of the picture now does he really have to kill him well yes he did but he didn't know that at the time so all in all, I thought this was an amazing episode. You know, at the beginning of the episode, we see the funeral shots of, and we think that it's Beth's funeral. And, and we see the glimpses of, of Woodbury and the glimpses of the prison. And we're like, why is that in there? It's kind of like, huh? You know, and they're very weird flashes, like someone's kind of half out of it. And you just don't realize that the whole show comes full circle. And we're back to the funeral really being Tyrese's funeral 
the, the glimpses being his hallucinations and his his mind warring with the choices that he's made and it was just such an incredibly well done episode I have no complaints about it whatsoever except for maybe the only complaint is that we didn't get to really say goodbye to Beth and see her funeral or burial if they had one I just I really wanted that last moment with her and so I was I was pretty sad to to not get that but I almost forgot the governor the governor was back David Morrissey was in the show like who else was really extremely shocked by that did you guys know he was doing a cameo appearance like it was so great I was so amazed when I saw him and I was like what he's back you know we get to see him and and to see Beth one more time I mean even if we didn't see her burial just to be able to see her one more time was amazing to see Lizzie and Mika to see Bob one more time I just oh, it was amazing so yeah I, I give this episode five thumbs up if I could I, I was so happy with it and and happy just in the sense of the way it was done and the send-off that they gave to Tyrese you know he wasn't just bitten and dead it was a great way to send him off and it was one of the first times we've ever seen actually the second time we've ever seen how the walker fever affects someone so in season one Jim got bit we saw glimpses of the walker kind of the walker rage within him and that was all we saw and so now here in season five we're getting a glimpse into what it is like what it is like to be overcome with the fever and to slowly die and turn into a walker like not saying everyone everyone's fever is like that but i mean that was pretty incredible to, to see what goes on in someone's mind when they are turning anyways guys that is it for this episode of our weekly walker talk review of season five episode nine the mid-season premiere so amazing i love this show so much i'm really sad to say goodbye to tyrese hopefully we don't get any more deaths uh, in the near future i'm i'm hoping for a death free rest of the season <laughs> which is probably not gonna happen at all but let me know what you guys thought of the episode what was your favorite part um oh oh my gosh okay this is gonna go in my in my promo review for the next episode but so the walker torsos that we see that come out of the truck there was a w carved in their head in shirewilt there was graffiti on the like on a low wall that said wolves not far do you guys think that the w stands for wolves in the talking dead greg nicotero mentions that there is some kind of new enemy potential threat that we may see in this season um he didn't really give too much information about it but it does hint at the fact that there is another group out there and they are bad guys again not good guys bad guys and i'm wondering if the w carved in the heads have to do with maybe them being called the wolves something like that i'm gonna do a promo review predictions video for episode 10 coming next week um probably tomorrow so we'll talk more about it there but let me know what you guys think about that what are your theories i'm super interested to hear about this potential new group i wasn't sure if anyone else caught that i'm sure by now you guys have but i mean who saw that who noticed that it took me a while i was actually editing my reaction video and it just occurred to me wolves w on their forehead what what is happening here walker torsos in a truck what <laughs> anyways that's it for today guys i hope you have a fantastic day i love you i'll see you next time bye okay there's so many things i'm forgetting what about brick's british voice on the radio did you guys notice that i was like listening to it and i didn't quite catch it at first and then i caught it that was rick's british voice like duh i love this show so much it's so great i love those little things that they throw in there that you might not catch at first but you catch the second time around it's incredible okay bye for real i'm leaving goodbye goodbye